Hey everybody, this is Chris DiFurio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. I hope you've been having an amazing week this week. You know, one of the things that I love to do on the bar is uh, clean stuff, and uh, it's really cathartic for me. And the company that I turn to, and so many people turn to, uh, to clean their coffee equipment and coffee uh, utensils and everything else that just comes in contact with coffee and needs to be cleaned regularly is Urnex. Urnex is a sponsor here at Keys to the Shop, and they have been creating cleaning products for the coffee industry for over 80 years. They develop products for a wide range of different equipment needs. Uh, You've got cold brew, steam wands, uh, grinders, brewers, espresso machines, and they even have come out with the world's first dedicated cleaner for roasters. One of the many great things about Urnex is how they work hand-in-hand with coffee professionals across the globe to make sure that what we use in the shop, what they give us to use in the shop, is really effective and easy to use as well. It never ceases to amaze me just how powerful and effective Urnex products are at taking care of what needs to be cleaned on the bar. Uh, The bottom line is that clean equipment makes a better tasting coffee, and the best cleaning products come from Urnex. So get Urnex in your store. Find out more information by visiting the website urnex.com. Okay, so today I want to talk to you about tracking baristas' progress. Now, in particular, I'm going to be talking to managers and uh, people who are in charge of leading groups in the coffee shop, leading baristas. Um, This is a group of people, managers, who are, you know, managers are historically under-resourced, underappreciated, overburdened, and pulled in tons of different directions to put out fires. And it's really, really difficult to keep track of who's doing what, both good and bad. And when it comes time for a review, a couple of things slip through the cracks. One, an opportunity to correct some kind of issue that's come up with behavior or process or whatever it is. Two, you lose the opportunity to really meaningfully um, encourage somebody in the review process. You know, if this sounds familiar, it's because it's just so common. And that's when you sit down with a barista and you don't really have much to go on in terms of specifics. And so you just tell them, hey, you know, um, thanks for coming in. Uh, This is just going to be really quick. You've just really done an amazing job um, over the past six months or whatever. And I I appreciate you. you. Everyone likes you. Customers really love you. Yeah, you're just doing an awesome job. You're killing it. Um, we're going to give you that uh, that raise, that six month raise, and uh, yeah, just sign here, and we're we're done. Thank you so much. And you move on from that, thinking, oh, okay, well, we just had a review, but that is not a review. That is that has nothing has been reviewed. What what specifically has been reviewed? In the barista's mind, there are tons of different little um, road bumps and. Uh, There's lots of different victories that they are hoping that somebody sees, and you've brought up none of them. You've not brought up any of the opportunities to grow, any honest feedback. You've not brought up any specific praises or affirmations of the jobs that they were hoping that people would see. And so one of the things that we've got to do in leadership is provide an avenue for tracking performance. You know, Bruce Tolgan in his book, It's Okay to Be the Boss, recommends that you have something called a manager's landscape where you have a file on each employee and on a regular basis, you just fill in the question of who is this person at work? Why do they need to be managed? What needs to be managed? Um, where, when, all those questions. And you kind of have a, uh, a profile of each person and who they are at work and all the specifics. That's a really fantastic tool. You don't necessarily have to use that, but what I would recommend is at least have a place where you have officially recorded in the employee's file both the uh, things that need work and the things that are, are positive and praiseworthy. That way, when it comes time for a review, you're not just sitting there giving them generalities that will dishearten them. It will reinforce the already assumed posture of, leadership really is they don't care they they don't really see what we do we're just out to um you know survive on the bar we're we're out here for ourselves and we just want to get that raise but how sweet it is when you walk into a room and somebody has noticed you 
throughout those uh, few months that you've been waiting to see how you've been doing. It's also uh, maybe bittersweet, but still sweet to know that somebody cares enough about you to actually hone in on an area where you can improve. Not a lot of people will do that for you. Now, as I'm talking about this, one of the questions that could be on your mind is, well, you know, at the beginning of this you know, talk here, uh, keys to the shop, you know, we're talking about being pulled in a bunch of different directions and just being um, stressed and under-resourced. Yes, that is true. It, and, I, and I hope that's not necessarily the case for you. For a lot of people, it is. But believe it or not, doing this is actually a relief to the stress because stress is not just having a lot to do. Stress is also feeling incompetent doing it or feeling impotent, like you don't have control. And that's a bad feeling to have when you're supposed to be managing. Um, you know, we're never really fully in control of these things anyway. But the stress is not necessarily the workload itself, but the clarity and the meaningfulness of the work itself. So if you can just write down little things, even in a notebook, it doesn't even have to be in an official file, just to start if you really are buried, you know, you really can't get your head above water. Just start with recording some specifics and then follow through with the employee about those things. When it comes time to have a review, you'll have that, that resource and it will make your job a lot easier, even though you're doing a little bit more work than you were previously. Uh, that work of tracking performance and following through and communication about what you track and what you write down is actually going to help ease a lot of different areas of your work as a leader in the shop. This is also true for you owners out there. I would encourage you to listen to the Shift Break episode called Leadership Abandonment Syndrome. I'll link to that in the show notes here on iTunes. Um, definitely worth listening to. But owners, you do need to um, pay attention to, record, and track specifics of both the areas that need work and the areas that are praiseworthy, victories, and wins so that you can go in there and coach for improvement and really affirm your your managers and is life giving to everyone involved all through the chain of command in a coffee shop and the more shops that take something like this on the healthier a landscape a retail coffee we're going to have and uh, it, it just really makes a huge difference so i hope you found this episode really helpful and that it encouraged you and motivated you to take action in your shop i know you're going to be so glad that you did and uh, thank you so much for joining me again um, have an amazing rest of your week. Go visit Ernex.com and get the best coffee cleaner in the industry in your shop. And uh, I will see you here next week for another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the Shop.